Hello and welcome. You're watching ADTV 24/7. I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Our top story coming in from the cabinet on a day which has seen massive buzz around who's going to make it to Prime Minister's dream team in this massive cabinet expansion. The first happening in its second term. Well, the time is set now for now. 6 p.m. is when that expansion letter will come out. And the government at this point claiming that it is going to be the youngest ever cabinet in India's history. Also saying the average age will be lowest ever after the revamp and there will be more women ministers and special representations will be given to those who have administrative experience as well. Average education is set to be higher as well. PhDs, MBAs, postgraduates, professionals will be incorporated. But most importantly, the changes are likely to improve factored in the polls that are in going to happen in the five states next year and the 2024 national election as well. There are some obvious names, some spotted in temples, others buying kurtas, but it is Prime Minister Modi, so expect surprises over there. Sanket Upadhyay will take you through the possibilities as of now. A quick list of all the probables. So there is Jyotir Aditya Sindhya as of this moment. Jyotir uh, is, uh, of course, has been credited for delivering Madhya Pradesh MLAs uh, to the Bharatiya Janata Party, migrated last year from the Congress. Then you've got Sarbanand the Sonowal, who was rewarded perhaps or will be rewarded for his political sacrifice. Sonowal vacated the Chief Minister's position for Himanta Biswa Sarma. He served as Sports Minister under Modi 1.0. Narayan Rane from Sena to Congress to BJP is a strong man from Maharashtra moving to the centre. Could this be a possibility of keeping no room for any turf war with Devendra Fadnavis in the state of Maharashtra. Anupriya Patel, alliance partner from Uttar Pradesh. Remember, UP goes to polls in the first half of 22. This is being seen as an attempt to win over allies. Then staying with UP, you've got uh, Rita Joshi. Joshi is an MP from Uttar Pradesh, was a former UPCC chief, then became a minister in the Yogi government. This is a crucial elevation uh, which, is, uh, which could come ahead of the UP elections. Also an attempt to woo the Brahmin community. Remember, she represents the Brahmin community. Then you've got Varun Gandhi, another MP from, uh, uh, from Uttar Pradesh, three-term MP from Pilibhit. Mother Menaka was dropped from Modi 2.0 cabinet. Then you've got Sakaldeep Rajbhar, uh, Rajya Sabha MP from Uttar Pradesh. This is important. Uh, this is an attempt to woo the Rajbhar community in eastern UP uh, because uh, uh, the former BJP ally, Om Prakash Rajbhar, left the NDA and criticized the UP government. This is being seen as an effort to negate the effect of the OP Rajbhar faction on the Rajbhar community. So they want to elevate their own just ahead of elections. Then Manipur, you've got Ranjan Singh Rajkumar, Lok Sabha MP from Manipur. Uh, Manipur is also going to polls in 2022, so there is a possibility of his elevation. And very quickly, last but not the least, Mr. Pashupati Paras, the uh, uncle, breakaway uncle from the LJP faction, could be rewarded by the BJP for breaking the Lok Jan Shakti party. Uh, of course, this, this family feud is still on. Uh, could he be rewarded for leading a faction against Chirag Paswan? And news just coming in at this point, uh, the Modi government has now plans to create a new ministry as well. It will be called the Ministry of Cooperation. A separate Ministry of Cooperation will be created by the Modi government for realization of the vision uh, wherein they want to provide a separate administrative, legal and policy framework for strengthening of cooperative movement in the country. The ministry will work, we are told at this point, to streamline processes for ease of doing businesses, for cooperatives and enable uh, development for uh, multi-state cooperatives as well. So a new ministry there coming in in the Modi expansion. And like we said, it's been a day of dramatic uh, developments and this time from Punjab where Captain Amrinder Singh met with Sonia Gandhi finally there in Delhi amidst a power tussle that is going on ahead of the assembly polls there with Navjot Singh Sidhu. We are told it was a 90-minute meeting and at the end of which Captain came out saying that all matters were discussed and he will go by whatever the party high command decides. I do not know anything about Chindu Sahib. I am the president of our government. I have discussed the president with our politician issue, political issue. And whatever the decision will happen on anything, party or any other thing, we will work on it. Whatever our Congress president wants. 
Moving on now, the last rites of Father Stan Swami took place today and uh, his friend was handed over uh, his mortal remains. The funeral was held in the afternoon in Mumbai as well and his death was condemned, remember, by several in India, even across the world. In fact, opposition leaders in the national capital wrote to the president saying that it is not just Stan Swami's case. Others who have been arrested in the Bhima Koregaon case in the draconian laws under UAPA should now be released as well. Pavna, daughter of octogenarian Varavar Rao, the only one among 16 accused in the Bhima Koregaon case who got medical bail for six months in February, says it is ironic that Father Stan Swami had fought for rights of under trials and died as an under trial denied those very rights. He worked for the rights of the under trial prisoners. He worked against the uh, unending, uh, uh, that is under trials being kept in jail without trial. Today we see him, he passed away as an under trial prisoner. Families of all 16 accused in the case have put out a statement expressing apprehension about conditions inside jail and denial of bail even on medical grounds. The conditions in which the, uh, they have been kept in jail is also really bad. Uh, for my own husband, we had to literally fight for him to get the medical, we had to go to the court to get an order uh, for him to get treated in a good hospital and he almost lost his eye. Hmm. Uh, Among the accused, at least six are senior citizens aged over 60 with comorbidities. Nine of them tested COVID positive and yet they were repeatedly denied bail, even on medical grounds. Talaja Jail has no medical facility, no possibility of treatment. There is no allopathy doctor and even Supreme Court last year itself at the time of pandemic uh, beginning itself said that jail should be decongested. They did not uh, do that. And prisoners are, 50 percent should be there, around 1500 prisoners should be there in Taloja jail in the pandemic condition. And if my father has to go back to jail again at the end of August in September, then it, we are, again we have, it's uh, no guarantee that he will be able to survive. Legally, under trials have a right to health, dignity and a speedy trial. And yet, for nearly three years, accused in the Bhima Koregaon case have been repeatedly denied bail even on medical grounds. The trial has not begun, charges have not been framed and yet the period even before trial cannot become punishment for a crime that's not been proven in court. With camera person Nagaraju, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. So the opposition have written to the president and internationally now the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights has spoken about the matter as well saying that we are saddened and disturbed by the death of 84-year-old human rights defender Father Stan Swami after prolonged pre-trial detention. With COVID-19, it is even more urgent that states release every person detained without sufficient legal basis. No one should be detained for exercising their rights to freedom of expression, of peaceful assembly and of association. Strong words there coming in from the UN and now the government of India has responded to this as well saying that bail rejected of uh, Stan Swami on the basis of charges against him and authorities in India act against violations of law. Also saying that the authorities don't act against exercise of rights and all such actions strictly in accordance with law underlining that India is committed to protection of human rights. Moving on now, after the black fungus, another post-COVID challenge with more cases coming up. It's called avascular necrosis or bone death. This is being observed in patients now and more and more numbers being reported. It's a medical condition in which the bones of a person become weak and then start rotting. Steroids are also believed to be one of the main causes of this disease. The next report will take you through more. Patients who have recovered from COVID are going to hospitals in Mumbai for help with a disease named avascular necrosis, that is bone death. This disease is caused by a blockage of blood supply or inadequate blood supply to the bones permanently or temporarily. Because of this, the bone tissue dies and the bones start weakening and disintegrating. 
Many big hospitals in Mumbai like Hinduja, Fortis, Jaslok, Walkhard and Sion are seeing such patients and believe steroids to be a big factor. Dr. Abhijit Kale, an orthopedic surgeon associated with Cyan Hospital, one of the major BMC hospitals, says that about one and a half months after recovering from COVID, a 25-year-old patient also reached him with a vascular necrosis. MRI करते ही दोनों भी hip joint में जो खून का दौरा है, जो blood supply है, वो बंद हुआ दिखाई दिया। उसको बोलते हैं avascular necrosis of the hip joint। वो second stage में था, तो second stage में अपन drilling करते हैं। Experts say that this disease is not fatal, but a delay in treatment can cause disability. So experts advise, if you have taken steroids in the battle against COVID and if you are facing any kind of pain in the joints, then consult a bone doctor. With Pooja Bharadwaj in Mumbai, Anasya Mathur for NDTV. The batch of CBSE students 2021 will have not one, but two board examination. And it's not a bad thing as the entire syllabus has actually now been divided into two terms. Two exams with roughly 50% syllabus each. Here's what you need to know. 17-year-old Arshia Madan of Delhi is among lakhs of students who will take not one, but two board exams. A major change because of the second year of the pandemic. पिछले कुछ सालों में यही होता था कि एग्जाम होता था तीन घंटे का और अगर किसी भी एक्सटर्नल या सिचुएशनल फैक्टर के वजह से आप उस एग्जाम में अच्छा परफॉर्म नहीं कर पाते थे तो उसको ठीक करने का वापस कोई ऑप्शन नहीं था पर अब 50-50 की वजह से अगर हम एक में अच्छा नहीं भी कर पाते हैं तो हमें दूसरे में ऑपरचुनिटी मिलती है मोर डिटेल्स आर नाउ आउट आफ्टर द लेट नाइट सरप्राइज अनाउंसमेंट ईच टर्म एग्जाम विल बी गिवन इक्वल वेटेज इन द फाइनल रिजल्ट्स no overlap in the syllabus of the two terms. The dates of the first term exams are from November to December 2021 and they will each be one and a half hour exams. The second term exams will be held from March to April in 2022 and they will be of two hours each. While the first one will be objective type, the second will be subjective type. The syllabus will be rationalized and details of the rationalized syllabus will be released by the end of this month. Last year, the CBSE had reduced the syllabus by 30 percent. I am very happy that the latest guidelines of CBSE have come from this because I have seen that actually my children are taking a lot of stress in this period and as far as 12th is concerned, this class is very important and they are taking a lot of pressure on their children because of their mental health. But the students will also be marked on internal assessments throughout the year. This will include three periodic tests, exploratory activities and practical work. This is going to be a great shift from the conventional method of assessment and that kind of practice which we really used to have earlier, it will really change the whole scenario. It is not going to be the same one size fits all kind of a system. It is the best way for the assessment of performance of board classes. As CBSC has said that sufficient efforts will be made so that all the internal assessments, just like practicals and project work, they all will be made more credible and reliable as per the new moderation policy that is going to be released very soon. CBSC has decided that if schools remain closed even during the November to December period, students will take the term 1 examinations online from home, but their weightage will be kept lesser in comparison to term 2 examinations while declaring the final results. In New Delhi with camera person Sushil Rathi, this is Sukirti Duvedi for NDTV. To Jammu and Kashmir now, where the delimitation exercise began today, less than two weeks after the Prime Minister held an all-party meeting in Jammu and Kashmir. But the exercise already witnessing a boycott. Nazir brings you this report from the valley. Will this meeting bring JNK closer to holding assembly elections after the state was stripped off its special status and statehood? The delimitation exercise began in the state today, less than two weeks after the Prime Minister held an all-party meeting on JNK, 
but barely hours before the delimitation commission started meeting political parties, the PDP, a former ally of the BJP, boycotted this exercise. In a strongly worded letter to the commission, the party questions its constitution and intent. The PDP says the outcome of the delimitation exercise is pre-planned. The process is aimed at realizing the political vision of a particular party. Delimitation is a part of the process to disempower the people of JNK. अब अगर एक तरफ आप एक विधान एक प्रदान कर रहे हैं क्या मौजूदा सरकार ने उसको खुद ही तरमीम नहीं किया ये करके अगर पूरे देश में 2026 में डिलिमिटेशन होना है जम्मू कश्मीर में आज 2021 में ही डिलिमिटेशन क्यों हो रहा है All other parties, including the National Conference, met members of the Commission, but they all share fears of manipulation and doubts over the sincerity of the delimitation exercise. The National Conference had earlier planned to boycott the exercise, but changed its view after meeting the Prime Minister. The party says they want the Commission to stick to its legal mandate, which is redrawing boundaries of the Assembly seats based on the 2011 census. Any other consideration will compromise the mandate and credibility of the process. कोशिश करनी चाहिए कमिशन को क्योंकि वो एक बार बाहर कर सकें और ये एक्सरसाइज जो है पूरे ट्रांसपेरेंट मैनर में होनी चाहिए और इसका जो मेन क्राइटेरिया है जो अब तक रहा है डिलिमिटेशन का वो ये है कि पापुलेशन के तनाजुब के हिसाब से ही जो है डिलिमिटेशन The contentious delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir has formally started, but there are fears of gerrymandering, PDP boycott, and apprehensions by all other opposition parties only explains a deep distrust. The credibility of delimitation process will be the first major step to ensure a genuine democratic space in JNK. In Srinagar, Nazir Masudi for NDTV. All right, with that, it's time for a quick break. We'll be back with all the news on the other side. Welcome back. Now, bars open till 3 a.m., booze shops to be bigger, even air-conditioned, and your favorite draft beer can be served at permitted events and even banquet halls. Feels like a dream? Well, not anymore, but that's if you're in the national capital, which has now a new excise policy. All the liquor bins, like this one in the background, will not be allowed in the national capital. Instead, they have to be triple the size of this one, with at least 500 square foot of area for the shop. The shop must be well lit, must have air conditioned facility and must provide walk-in facility for all the customers. With the new excise policy, the Delhi government has decided to privatize all the 849 liquor vents across the national capital. The Delhi government has announced a number of significant changes with an eye on increasing revenue by about 20% at least. Some of the big changes that will affect customers and businesses are bars in hotels, clubs and restaurants can open till 3 a.m. instead of 1 a.m. pre-pandemic. There will be 10 liquor shops at the airport. Some shops will relocate as the number will remain the same, but only three per municipal ward will be allowed. All should be equipped with security and CCTVs. Time slot goes up to 3 a.m. That way we can have different time slots. The bars and restaurants will not be busy. We, can, we, we will be able to maintain social distancing. Customers claim new excise policy will enhance their experience. Customer को बहुत फायदा उससे एक तो brand देखने को मिलेगी यहाँ मांगते हैं कुछ customer को ये भी नहीं पता तो कि क्या क्या brand होता है आसपास भीर भड़क के से तो अंदाज़ रहा कि भीड़ है तो आदमी गजा आएगा ही नहीं अंदर तो यहाँ क्या है एक के ऊपर एक एक के ऊपर एक छोटी सी दुकान में The government owns approximately 60% of liquor vents in the national capital. With the implementation of new excise policy, the government expects the revenue to rise by 20%. The question, however, still remains that when and how these changes be implemented in the national capital. With colleague Sharma and camera person Ashwini Mehra, Makshidongri, NDTV.